Hi, everyone. Um, so uh, you need to ask yourself at times, are you losing money as a host? Excuse me. <laughs> Please cut that out. Um, so, yeah, you need to keep keep aware of what you're paying, you know, what's coming in, what's going out. And um, there are a lot of challenges as a host and uh, so you need to be aware of how much money's coming in and coming out, like I just said. <laughs> uh, so what? We offer bicycles, and uh, recently the covers got ripped, so we had to buy new covers. They're, they're outside waiting for guests uh, as well. Um, the bikes need maintenance. I'm actually thinking of getting rid of the bicycles because I'm not sure it really adds to the bottom line and this is a business so if what you have isn't making you money isn't adding to your money um, maybe best to get rid of it even though it's nice for guests so indeed an empty property isn't making money so finding reliable cons consistent bookings can be a challenge as well so you've got the delicate balance of pricing um, in my case i'm up against uh, we're kind of, we're near a really nice area. We're not in the area. So my prices have to be very competitive. If I raise them a little bit too much, boom, we don't get any guests. <laughs> uh, and if they're too low, then we're losing money or I don't feel like I'm making much money. So it's a real fine line. It's a, it's always a challenge and you're always tinkering with it. Um, some of the places right in the area, they, uh, they're very expensive. So I often think we can charge a lot more, but when I try to, uh, be cheaper, but not a lot cheaper, boom, I just, yeah, we don't get any guests. So we have to be quite a bit cheaper just to get anyone. We're not that far away actually, but we're not in the area. So, so first, uh, let's understand where your money is going. As an Airbnb host, it's essential to know where every penny is spent and how it contributes to your overall expenses. So let's break it down. One of the most significant areas of costs is cleaning. So pay your cleaners well. Keep them happy because they are gold, especially my cleaners. And they're more than cleaners. They uh, talk to the guests. They um, they're kind. They help out with questions and things like that. When I travel, uh, they answer, they answer messages all the time and you do lots of things for me. So, uh, your, your staff is gold. So treat them like that. So whether you're doing the scrubbing yourself or hiring a professional cleaning service, cleanliness is paramount in the hosting business. Yeah, it sure is. It's not, it's a non-negotiable expense but it's worth investigating whether you might be able to streamline your cleaning processes or negotiate better rates with your service providers. But again, I would make sure you pay them well. Another problem is trash and recycling. Um, so you need someone who's going to be able to deal with that. And that can add up as well. So when you do your prices, you have to consider all of these things. Uh, we just bought a new sofa. That cost about a thousand dollars. Um, there are lots of things that you know you, you need to replace TVs, things like that, washing machines, air conditioners, heaters. So, yeah, regular maintenance can prevent costly repairs down the line or replacement. Utilities are another major expense, and electricity to water to Wi Fi. Uh, really try to get your guests to turn off things. So many guests just don't. Um, I actually mentioned that in their review because I think they should be better. I try to be polite, but, um, I would mention that in your reviews of guests that, you know, they need to turn off, be polite, but mention that they left the lights on when they left or they left on the air conditioner. Uh, they should be better. I don't really market or advertise other than I have blogs uh, I'm on Facebook. I'm on YouTube. So um, 
yeah, I don't really pay for advertising, but you can. So if you do, then you need to factor that in. You may want to get a professional photographer that can cost you money too. I did once. It actually, he wasn't really any better than any of the photos that I took or other people have taken. Uh, guests often take fantastic photos of your place and then show them to you or send them to you. And I, I very politely ask if I can use those. And they usually, they've always said yes. So, uh, sometimes you have guests who love photography and they're good at it. So, uh, yeah, if you get a guest who does that then ask if you can use the photos. There are going to be things that uh, break that you didn't plan on uh, breaking. <laughs> we never do. But uh, yeah, there's some unexpected costs. Uh, I don't charge guests usually. Uh, for one reason, we're in the hospitality business, and I just think it's the cost of doing business. If the guest has been really, sorry to be rude, but stupid, <laughs> Uh, then I will try to charge the guest. But Airbnb is not very helpful. They want you and the guest to work it out. If the guest says no, then basically you don't collect. So um, the only time I've been able to collect was the guest almost he burnt the futon. He could have burnt down the house. He could have killed himself, actually. It was dangerous. He had a heater. put. He moved a heater really close to the bed. Now we don't allow that to happen. If there are any sort of movable heaters, they're bolted down so they can't be moved. You basically have to imagine the most stupid thing someone can do, and someone may do it sometime. And most guests are fine, you know, 99%, but it's the 1% that just uh, are a challenge. So consider using a spreadsheet uh, or financial software to help keep track in real time. Uh, I actually don't do all this. I, I have a feel for, you know, how much we're spending, how much is coming in after many years of doing this work. But yeah, it's really good for you to understand what your costs are and how much money is coming in. Uh, keep in mind the Airbnb take 3%, which is fantastic compared to most companies but that's 3%. So you need to remember that. I would think about, you know, ways to boost your bottom line. Can you add to your business? Could you do tours? Uh, at time of recording, Airbnb has actually paused Airbnb experiences, but they say they're going to bring them back. Uh, but you don't have to wait for that. You could start your own tour. Offer tour to nearby, tours to nearby places if you're into that. Um, I'm a very, a, a people person, so I would like to do, to do that. And then, uh, like my guest houses, I would like to hire a staff. I would still do tours myself, but I would like to get maybe university students to do some of the tours. So yeah, you can delegate that work. So expand on it. You could even, um, offer your cleaning services. You Presumably, you'll have a cleaning staff, and you could offer them to local businesses or houses or other Airbnbs if you want, if they want more work. And if you want more work, you know, you could be the, you'd be the boss and could delegate where they go. Uh, but that's just, yeah, that's kind of another topic. But there are options, I'm saying. So yeah, during slow times, make sure you lower your prices. During high season, uh, raise your prices. Uh, recently, I've raised my prices by 10% for different high seasons. And you need to get a feel for what the high seasons are in your area. It's going to depend on where you are, where you host from. So if there are festivals, sports events, you know, the Olympics or some kind of rugby tournament or football tournament, maybe you're going to get a surge in business. So maybe you can take advantage of it. Don't gouge. Again, we're in the hospitality business and you want, um, it hurts all of us if people gouge, 
you know, if we're all on the Airbnb platform, Airbnb gets a bad reputation. So try to keep in mind that, you know, you want to make money, but you don't want to gouge people. You know, be kind, basically. All the things you learned in kindergarten. <laughs> be kind to others. There are software tools you can use uh, to help you to understand when your high seasons are and when they aren't, but I, I don't use them. It's pretty obvious when they are. Uh, I don't recommend that you need to. It's just another expense. Um, there are pricing tools that supposedly will help you with your pricing. Again, I don't use them. Um, you get good at this stuff. You get really good at it. Um, I think I've said it before many times, change your prices every day. Uh, it helps with the, with the, let's say YouTube, oops, Airbnb algorithm. Um, I don't do it all the time. I, I tend to, I tend to do it when, when I'm not getting bookings, I think, uh oh, I better start uh, updating the prices every day. Recently, we're getting lots of business, so I haven't bothered. But, um, yeah, if you're not, update your prices every day. So basically think of all the amenities, all the appliances that you would want in an Airbnb. And those are the things you're going to need to get and maintain and then ultimately replace. So things like coffee makers, pots, pans, cutlery, you know, forks, knives, uh, toasters, things like that. Maybe a dishwasher if you're kind uh, washing machines, as I mentioned, all those things, TV, Wi-Fi, all that stuff. So, yeah, but in spite of all that, you can do very well with this. So you just need to price, price it right. So if you're kind, if you're, if your place is clean and you respond to messages quickly and, uh, you're helpful to guests, you're going to get glowing reviews, you know, if all of those things are true. And that's going to attract more guests. Guests read reviews. So then if you're a super host, once you get enough reviews and, you know, you don't cancel on guests and you're reliable, then you become a super host. That's another thing that helps you. Uh, over time, people are going to talk about your place. You can't please everyone, but... Um, those things are going to lead to more and more and more business. Uh, you're going to need regular supplies like shampoo, uh, dishwashing liquid, soap, uh, filters for your vacuum, paper towels. So you need to um, factor in that. You may want to buy that stuff, stuff in bulk. Uh, we actually don't, but it's an idea. I host in Japan where... Uh, things used to be very expensive, but basically prices have stayed static for the last 30 years. So things are actually fairly cheap here. Uh, everything except electricity. Electricity is very expensive here. So it, again, it hurts when guests don't turn things off. So saving money with maintenance is about being proactive. It's not about cutting corners. So you need to be proactive and Maybe get your air conditioners cleaned once a year, maybe more. Um, and it'll save you money in the long run, all those things. So being a host is really all about learning on the job and slowly getting better. So I think a course like mine will help you, but you're going to learn so much in your first year of actually doing it. So take this as kind of a, a prequel to hosting. But yeah, once you start doing it, you're going to learn all this stuff. Yeah, you're going to learn so much in the first year, what works, what doesn't, how much things cost. So yeah, take your first year as a learning experience.